right? What's happening, people? Today, can you move that? Actually, I can't really see your face. That's weird, right? Um, today I'm joined by a fellow coach, Eamon. Did I say that right? You did. I'm fucking paranoid about saying <laughs> Irish names. Me, I've asked you like three times on the way here. A fellow coach, but I don't actually know how to describe like your content. Like you're a plasterer, when you see that quite a lot. Yeah. Then you're a, a dating expert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at the same time you give a little bit of life advice and then you dance on stilts yeah yeah I do a little bit of everything jack of all trades yeah. I suppose you could call me yeah it's hard to what one are we going for now what are you now a bit of everything still it's like fitness obviously is my main thing yeah um, but the way I'm trying to get away from the plaster and then because I've hate that job um so i'm trying to you told me three times today yeah oh it's the bane of my life but i try to get away from that and maybe try to bring people along to show them that you can get away from fucking a job that you don't like and it's not ah. it's not not too like i'm heading for 30 years of age now so and i'm changed completely changing careers like so yeah I'm trying to show people that just so you actually want to document the change yeah because so, exactly. i like how open you are about like you're plastering and you're trying to go into online coaching whereas yeah. a lot of people are like i'm an online coach but they've got no clients yeah because yeah. they're trying to be like sell it like that's what they do that's full time do. yeah yeah so you're like slowly transitioning and online coaching yeah, exactly yeah class right so on the way here as well there's a few times you went to talk about something or tried to change the subject because yeah. i was saying to you when you do a podcast and you speak to the person before it sometimes you can have a great chat and you're like mate i did not want to know like half that i wanted to save it for the podcast yeah yeah so you, I seen you post a video where you got a comment from someone calling you fat phobic. Yes. What was what was that? Because like, I only seen your reaction to it. So what what were they calling you fat phobic from? And what was their actual comment? They it wasn't a comment. They texted me or DM me, we'll say on Instagram because just because of my content, they were saying like, no, oh, there's nothing wrong with people being up. Because I'm trying to, I'm not convince people, but show people how to lose fat yeah more or less they were saying like why like it's okay to be fat like you know stop yeah. pressuring people into losing weight they're perfect the way they are and you know you're fat you're fat phobic was the last sentence of the message or said you're fat phobic i was like oh. and i got that comment a few times yeah well, well from people. what videos is it do you think just from literally saying how like how literally laying body? on a plate how you can lose, how body, you can fat? lose body fat like yeah yeah do you know what I mean? What do you want people to do? That's like a I'm personal saying. trainer? Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Like, Here's how it stay the same way. I'm a personal trainer. Would you yeah, like to hire yeah. me? <laughs> I couldn't believe it, like. And I, I got it a couple of times. I got it on on TikTok as well in a comment and I got that DM. Like, this was an essay of a message, like. Yeah. And then at the end of it was just, you're fatphobic. I was like, how how am I? Like? Yeah. First of all, I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know, was it, I, what, am I afraid of getting fat or am I afraid of fat people? I didn't know. What, what it's the whole mean. thing of going into fat shaming, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And like, it's, sure a whole, it's a whole new thing that's only came about in the last five like, years. Against anyone. Like I always say, if you're happy and you're not harming anyone else, you will have no objections for me. If you're fat and you're happy, yeah, I think it, people get I'm it. I'm trying to help people who want to be helped. Yeah. If you want to stay the way you are, that's fine. That's exactly it. That's like you know the soundbite I mean? that I always try to say is like, we're not trying to reach people that are overweight that don't want to lose weight. We're trying to reach people that want to change. And there's a lot of, like a lot of people that are overweight. Yeah, yeah. From being overweight when I was younger, I didn't want to be overweight. It was the main thing I was insecure about. Yeah. But above anything, and maybe not having the biggest willy as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I was more insecure about being fat, mm. 100%. So I think it's, like, how do you go about it without, like, you're going to offend people? Exactly. And like like you said, we're not trying to offend anyone. If my content isn't what suits you, well, then just don't watch it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's There's plenty of people that will probably talk about stuff you have interest in, so go follow them or whatever. Do you know one of the worst things I've done is, like, the more you post... I don't know if you find this with fitness, but I found the more I post, like I would think about if something, the way I word something was going to offend someone. Yeah. And recently I've really, really tried to stop doing that because I think I made a few videos. Like one was about the way PTs talk about fat people. I don't really like even just saying if you're a fat person, stuff like that. I still don't really like stuff like that. But I made this video was like calling out PTs that are like slagging off fat people. But I got so many, and I still, the video was all right, but the way I came at it, I got so many people with like blue hair, um, 
that sort of crowd. You know exactly what I'm talking know about. The people they're talking about, yeah, yeah. So I got, I mean, I must have got about five, ten thousand followers, but like most of them were people that I'm never gonna want as clients yes. ever. And like then after I posted that one, when I would go back to like, I'd be like trained to failure in the gym, I'm, and it'd be me in the gym, and it'd be go that. I would fucking hate like a PT to talk to me like that. Yes. And all I'm saying is like do the last like few reps so yeah, you're not yeah. gonna grow and that's stuff what like i when i was starting out with say posts and stuff online as well it was like i was so worried about how many followers i was getting yeah but now it's like i'd rather even some of the followers you'd be getting are like like you said they're never going to turn into clients yeah. do you know what i mean so, and even if they did they'd be the fucking yeah biggest so i'm now the way i'm posting stuff i'm talking not trying to please everyone i'm trying to talk to the followers i already have do you know what i mean yeah, i don't yeah. care if i get new followers i'm trying to turn my followers into clients rather than turn people into followers you get yeah try saying? help the people that are already exactly, following you exactly. and try and not i've been really making an effort to try not censor myself so that i get yeah. my actual views so i don't get people follow me that like fucking hate my, yeah. how, how i actually am because i can be quite like straight to the point and yeah. like that i think that's half the reason people follow me at the start is because i did just say what i actually thought and then over time, I started like making content that I didn't even really believe in myself, so that more people would follow me. But exactly, like I'm honestly the biggest red flag to me is someone with blue hair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just know it's more. It's not even I'm not gonna like them. I know they're not gonna like me. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah exactly. Mean? Yeah, because that's why even in let's say if I have a consultation with someone I'm bringing on as a client, like I will tell them straight out the way i work things like and i'll say if you don't want to work with me that that's fine like yeah you know what i mean but I, that's the way i do things if it doesn't suit you it doesn't suit you, you know what i mean because you will have people that i'll get along with great as a client and then other people just won't like you, you yeah know, i won't like them so there's no point in dragging them out for 12 weeks and training do you know what i mean yeah do you really try screen that out when you're taking someone on like try to look for things that are like maybe show that they're going to be a shit client. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I have a set, I have a consultation and I have set questions that I ask mm -hmm. people like, and it depends on what way they answer them, whether I'm going to work with them or not. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like to me, a lot of it is why are you doing it kind of thing. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it depends on their answer to that question, whether or not I like take them on. I've like, got IB for weeks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I want, do you know, I want, I do, or like, you know, you can say I'd want to do a photo shoot. No, that's yeah. not me like do you know what i mean i'm not that trainer like i i won't like name any names but i had a dm from a girl the other day and she had a coach that took her through a photo shoot and then she was telling me everything she'd done so she'd lost like quite a lot of weight she'd done a 12 week photo shoot she was on 1200 calories the full time and i think it was like a challenge or something and she was on a meal plan and then she went back to the same coach saying she wanted to lose some more and she just put her back on 1200 calories again after doing like a 10 week strict diet. Yeah. I'm like, man, you can't just do that to people. Yeah, you can't yeah. just keep giving people talking, low calories. But there's the same thing. There's obviously loads of um, PTs do that. Like there's a photo, there's this group a of, photo shoot. There's, yeah, there's a group of PTs that are like, they just get you from one stage to the photo shoot. Yeah. Post that transformation, rinse and repeat, get all the clients off yeah, your yeah. transformation. Don't give a fuck about you after the photo yeah. shoot. Yeah, that's, and like I was talking to someone who did one. And this girl was, uh, she was a hairdresser mm -hmm. and co it was coming into Christmas. Busiest time of the year for these people. And the man had her on a thousand calories a day. She said like she was taking pre-workout in work to try to get through the day. Like, like that's not living like, no. like, that's ridiculous. Not at all. Jesus Christ. Like that's, but that's the opposite of health and fitness. Yeah, like, exactly. That's unhealthy. Like. I try to say that a lot to people as well. It's like, even though you've seen a transformation, that that transformation might not be health. Like, yeah, they yeah. might be unhealthy or unhealthy, after yeah, that. definitely. Like, it's taking it. Like, I have nothing against anybody who wants to do a photo shoot, if that's, but like, the hardship you put yourself through to get there is terrible. I tried yes. to do one cut in my life. It was supposed to be six weeks. I did four, said, fuck that. I <laughs> went back eating. I couldn't do it. Like, so I wouldn't expect. I claim to do it because I tried to do it and I couldn't. Like yeah. I tried to sit myself between ten and twelve percent body fat at all times. That's where I right. like to be. Like I'm more about eighteen. Yeah, that's <laughs> where that's where I keep myself because yeah. I think that's sustainable. Anything more than that to me is too much stress. Like it's not, yeah. wor it's not worth it. Like you know it's not mean? worth it at all. No way. I think it only takes you to do it once before you like. I've only had abs once in my yeah. life. I mean, I used to look at myself in the mirror and go, "That was not worth yeah, the, the pain." Like, same after like, that four week cut I did. 
Four weeks? Yeah, four <laughs> weeks. That's what I did. <laughs> yeah. Four weeks of a cut. And I swear, I now I got myself fairly lean. Do you yeah. know what I mean? In them four weeks. And like you say, I took about 10 pictures and I thought Shame. I was a great lad. But I look back at the pictures like you say. I remember I was in college at the time and um, finishing my apprenticeship and I used to have to leave my wallet at home in yeah. case I'd buy, buy a bar of chocolate when I went into college. Like. Mm. Right. What I, what I actually really want to ask you about rather than the fitness stuff is when we spoke about it before, like your your dating advice. Oh yeah. And I want to ask how that actually came about and like where did where did you get the advice from as well? So were you just coming up with that on the spot or no, were you Googling yeah, it? Well, yeah, no, I came up with advice on the spot. Basically, the way it happened was, I would say when I was younger, I was, um, well, people would have said, call a fuck boy or, you know mm. what I mean, a dickhead more or less. And I sort of changed my ways maybe a couple of years ago. Mm. Kind of want, maybe wanted to settle down a little bit. And I was on TikTok Live and people started asking me questions about that sort of stuff. And I was answering them. And I was sort of more or less telling young, like young people obviously are on TikTok. And, yeah. and they were asking me questions. I was more or less telling the lads, don't be like me when I was younger. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And in what that, way? In what way? Like, what were you like when you were younger? Just prick to women yeah. really. Like, do you know what I mean? I didn't give a shit about anybody. Only yeah. myself, do you know what I mean? I was just a selfish bastard and leading people on and shit like that. Never really led people on, but it was more of a I just slept around, like, do you know yeah. what I mean? And got a really bad name for myself. Do you know what I mean? Like people would have known still me have that for name. being a prick. That's what I was trying that's what I tried to tell these lads that like that name doesn't go away in yeah. overnight, like, do you know what I mean? And maybe yeah, I'd say if you've asked a lot of people still, they would say, Yeah, Sam and Duff is a prick. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's the truth. Like I'd say, there's a lot of people that have a bad opinion of me in that sense. So I was trying to maybe teach people that it's not the way to go. Yeah. Do you know when you're younger and what is it worth to you? Like, Do you know what I mean, you're a great lad on Sunday morning with your friends. Do you know what I mean? There, oh, you're a great lad, but then you're going home on your own while they go home yeah. to their girlfriends for the week. Like, well, um, but see, like lads that are like maybe between the ages of, like 17 and 21. How do you get someone out of that mindset? Because I'm pretty sure, like every one of my mates were that way inclined that it was all about shagging as as, as much as, as possible. possible yeah, yeah that is what it was like though because yeah, we'd yeah. meet you'd go on holiday and like i'm not scared to admit this admit this every lad's holiday is like how many birds have you shagged yeah, and it's like yeah. they based your success like your holiday is based on how many <laughs> like the success of the holiday is based on how many birds you shag yeah, it yeah. is but bear in mind i'm fucking turning 27 i'm not like that anymore yeah but that's what i mean i'm not like, all like that that's the way i when i turned they will say when i got maybe 25 26 that's when i just stopped thinking that way do you know yeah. what i mean and like it's honestly like what is it what good is it to you like you look back now and say yeah shagged a lot of women what good is that to me now today like, yeah, especially the holidays yeah like it's worth absolutely and you don't to you. and like all my holidays they were all funny as fuck but the only things i remember is like the laughs with the lads yeah yeah the crack you had yeah. like yeah it's same as that like sure like don't mean smart there's women that don't remember their name like <laughs> do you know what i mean i don't if they walk past there's women i'd say if i walk past them in the morning i wouldn't recognize them do you know what i mean it's yeah. like what good is it to you nothing like and then i have friends will say both you and my friends now have women for the last five years and i have kids or moved in with them all that crack and now i look at them and i'm like you get envious of them yes man. definitely that's what i'm saying i'm like so far behind that now do you know yeah. what i mean not that you're on a timeline to do any of these things but it's like when i was fucking around they were building yeah. with this one person do you know what i mean and i i am raging that and maybe i didn't yeah and you probably say. had a few like maybe that you were seeing that were probably really sound yeah yeah of just course that way inclined yeah I, I just wasn't arsed do you know what i mean at the time it was just like no i can't be bothered with i that, think like. there's something in you well for me there was anyway it sounds like you as well at 25 something in my brain switched Please. i was like i have no savings I've, yeah yeah i've not had a really, like proper relationship yeah, or anything I was and i same. don't i don't have a fuck, i'm in a job i fucking hate hey, and stuff oh, like that. don't talk to me about the job <laughs> 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 oh stop yeah but that's the way it was and then when i changed that then i started thinking do you know along the lines of changing my life do you know what i mean i was like how because i used to drink a lot as well when i was Same. younger every weekend like do you know what i mean and then i was like that was a problem as well how much i was drinking so then i stopped doing drinking as much of maybe only going out every five or six weeks mm -hmm. do you know for a night out and then I thought maybe my job wasn't too bad because it was the hangover that was making the making, Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, it was so horrific. bad. Then after maybe a year of doing it that way, I was like, 
no the job's still shit <laughs> so i had to so then i started thinking about changing my job as well and then like you say i went down to i always was into fitness but then it was like i was like a, a drinker with a fitness problem you know what i mean i was <laughs> never heard that before <laughs> i was drinking every weekend and it was hindering me fitness yeah. as well you know what i mean but then when i start stopped the drinking so much yeah. fitness sort of took over and then i was thinking if i went into the career of personal training and all that would my love or like me grow or my love for fitness i was, I was scared of that as well a little bit you know what i mean would i get sick of it because i was doing it all the time so i kind of really talked myself out of it for about a year and then when the pandemic hit i've I'd found load. the opposite i've found that I've found in like even more love for like Same. because you're trying to learn what you know but to coach it to beginners so like it's a completely different thing and it's actually just as interesting yeah how to apply what you know but to someone that knows nothing and also exactly I had like a lot of people you'll coach like our when we started the gym our like ability would have been better than like maybe say like a 30 year old woman that's not because we played football and you've played hurling and yeah, stuff exactly we can pick things up a lot faster Easier, yes so it's actually a completely different skill teaching someone and i find that so interesting yeah so now i'm thinking about like how do i apply my knowledge to someone someone else yeah. yeah and it's like everybody is like you're even though like i i know a lot about fitness i'm still learning so you don't much. stop no it's mad yeah. it's mad like how much information is out there plus by working with people yeah. it's mad how like learn different techniques that work for different people just yeah. because something work for one person does not mean it's going to work for everyone you know like I mean? in person i'll find that you you'll say a cue to someone that's yeah. worked that you've had a session before right and you teach them an exercise you say one cue do the most perfect thing and then you tell the next person the cue and they do something like they turn around and <laughs> they do something yeah, completely do opposite something to, yeah, and yeah it's just, definitely it's just mental trying yeah. to learn all of that yeah. because like we'll say my first two clients i had were ideal they, if i had set told them stand on your head for a half an hour every morning when you get up they would have done it like, right to, not in order to get yeah. wherever they were going so in my head i was like this is easy mm. like clients are going to be so handy and then yeah. i took on more and then there's people that didn't want to do the work didn't want to do it. and then you're like right how am i going to get it into this person's head that this yeah. is what they need to do like, and it's it's mad how different people my are. very first client his name's tom you might even like I'll, or i'll send him this sound bite i know him because i was traveling in asia and the first day i met him he drank what was the number there was like we were in a hostel in vietnam and there was a competition for who could drink the most jaeger bombs and i think the record was like 41 and mate this guy he's from exeter and he was like i'm gonna beat that and he got up at like six in the morning he, he must have drank about 15 and then we all went to like the, these sand dunes and he was like we done like five in the morning like because he had an england flag and then i had two dublin mates they were like no we we're gonna beat that and then we were all like nah fuck that and he was on like 50 and we're like no let's just leave him to that <laughs> we came back and he was on like about 36 we'd been back for like six hours and he was absolutely plastered and he, he drank like 47 47 he got put to bed and he was in our group and I never got to speak to him really properly for like five days because he was just absolutely fucked. Oh, the next four days. And how many, if you're saying like 47 shots, how, how many shots is in a bottle of Jägermeister? Oh, it's just, no, so it's a Jäger bomb. So it's yeah, a shot Jägermeister. So like maybe 25 mils into Red Bull. So that's what he was doing. Yeah. The amount of caffeine never yeah, made the Jäger. Yeah, me hard. It's yeah, fucking hell. I'd say that um, ridiculous. And he was my first client. Obviously, it was well after the Jäger yeah, bombs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was a big drinker and stuff as well. But he, he just took to weight training instantly and i say this all the time i reckon he, i'll never get a better transformation out of someone yeah, him, ever because yeah. he he literally got he didn't even get that strong straight away he's strong, he's strong as fuck now but he just like adapted straight away straight and that. his body went from just like looking like a dad bod to just ripped as fuck and i only That's had bad. him on 2300 calories and you just get and i was like fuck i'm gonna be the best coach <laughs> yeah that's what i was thinking i was like she's all my clients are gonna be just like, brilliant i am that's gonna be a multi-millionaire yeah, every yeah. cunt in the uk <laughs> it's gonna, gonna be ripped as fuck <laughs> i've got it all stuff just put them on 2300 calories yeah, four yeah. days a week so. and then the, the other thing with a lot of clients i see as well because they see the, the training i do and they see would say what i look like and then they're and I preach that it can be done sustainable and you can enjoy your foods and you can do all this. Yeah. Um, they think they're going to get to where look like me in their 12 week transformation. Yeah. And I'm like, it's not the way it works. Like I've been training for 10 years. Like, yeah. do, do you know what I mean? So people have different expectations. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. From what they're going to get. 
And I always say like your your actions have to like reflect your goals, if you get what I'm saying. So yeah. in order to get to where you want to be, you have to set out what it's going to take for the client and then sometimes they have to figure out whether it's worth it or not kind of yeah. thing. And I think even trying to drill them in to not have expectations to look like someone else exactly. anyway. Because even if they train for two years hard as fuck, like they might, might happen. and they might be at a completely different starting point from you. Exactly. And they're just going to look, their genetics are going to be different. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not to say that someone's got like to make all about genetics, but like if you hold body fat in different places different and places, stuff. Like, exactly, yeah. Because I always say to people like I, like I'm never going to try to get abs because I think it's like where I genetically store fat. There is a point where I'm literally starving myself to get yeah. abs and I'm like, that's oh, not worth it. I, where some people can sit labs. Yeah, I'm the same. Like that's the way I am. I'm the opposite to you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't, I, I don't hold body fat at all. Like, yeah. I don't. You probably do, but it's like in your legs or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. It's like, not like I've, I don't, I don't think I can ever remember a time where you couldn't see my abs. Like it's yeah. like uh like say, I always try to sit around. So 10, I only 100%. have four weeks where I could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, like you said, everybody's different, and the people just say I'm lucky. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. maybe I am. I don't know, but you know, some it's you're never. You should never like gauge it on. Oh, I want to look like him. Do you yeah. know what I mean, no, I just want to look better than the way I look now. Do you know what I mean? That's the way. And you even just like thinking. improving your habits is such exactly, a start. Because yeah. if a lot of our clients will probably come overweight, and it's just more about like let's just help you start changing your yeah. lifestyle a bit. Because I, I even. I've started now doing a thing where I'm I'm gonna make my clients not take take progress pictures and then not take them for eight weeks because mm. there's there's this really good poem and it sounds so cringy right but it's called like two hundred pounds is always two hundred pounds and it's about starting lifting and it basically go it goes through this insecure lad and then he's got this like um, sports teacher in school and he convinces him to start lifting weights. And he tells him not to look in the mirror for like six months or something like that, just so that he can they concentrate on getting stronger sure. in the gym and then not look for the, the physical changes straight away. Because right. it's what, it's the mistake most people make. Yes, they yes. go three weeks, they lift weights for three weeks and they're like looking in the mirror and going, nothing's changed, I'm going to stop. Yeah. So he's like, you just lift, lift and then put 1.25 plates on every time. That's like the moral of the story yeah. is just build the habits and then mm. like that'll come all fall. Outside, like I try to do bit of like mindset kind of stuff with my clients as well not that like i would read a lot of self-help books and mm. all that kind of crack and to me once you've read one of them you've read them all I they're kind of agree. all the same but like just if you were to pick different one, ways of getting to the same fucking yeah if you were to pick one what one would you pick because I, I can never really do that pick one self-help yeah. book because i don't think you sh honestly i don't think you should read more than three Otherwise, I think you're just wasting your time. I see a lot of self-help books as, if, unless you're doing something that you want to do, as a lot of people use it as procrastinating on doing what they actually yes, want to do. Yes. I, which, well, when I say that, I'm speaking from experience. See, from like 18 to 21, I read so much, but I didn't yeah. do fuck all any yeah, information. No, I've only started reading maybe yeah. in the last two years. Of all these if you could books. pick a self-help book that you should read if you've never read one, which one would you go for? Think Like a Monk never read that You've one never read it it's very good it's like not hippie but it, he talks like a monk do you know what i mean but if you can put it into your own words the way you would think it if you know if you get what i'm saying yeah you can change it into your way of talking or your way of putting it makes a lot of fucking sense what the man is saying like i don't like preaching that stuff to people because they are probably sick of hearing it yeah every time you want instagram or go on anywhere you have some cunt telling you to go for a sea swim or whatever <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah. like and it's but to me all that shit does i do all that stuff yeah and it helps me, but like I know people are sick of listening to it, so I don't really talk about it that much. Yeah, every time I go on my TikTok, there's some cunt in Loch Lomond just with a selfie and yeah, yeah, in the in, in like the cold lock. water, yeah, yeah. But like to me, I do talk that stuff to my clients. In fact, I think it really, really does help. Mm. And like I be reading books in work, I mean on my lunch break, right. like, and all the lads on the site like taking a piss. Slaughter, on yeah. Yeah, but I don't give a fuck. Like, you yeah. know what I mean, I'm happy the way i am i don't really care what people think like, yeah, you know yeah. what i mean so i just do my own thing but i think reading is something that you should never stop but i think once you've read a few self-help self-help books it's better just to read about whatever you're interested in that's it yeah that's what i moved on to so just like reading books maybe on like psychology and stuff rather than the like self-help self stuff. Help stuff and i yeah, found yeah. that i'm still learning i still and it still helps with like your mindset and stuff yeah. but just rather than that's just getting so atomic habits or yeah habits. that was actually it's really good, good. yeah, yeah. yeah. I would say that would be one that I would read definitely, but that's 
I found that a good bit different from the rest of the sort of shit. Yeah. Like he actually went into like studies and there was some really smart stuff that he said. I think another book that's definitely good is the Mark Manson one. The so I just I literally only finished that the other but day. But I only think that's, I think if anyone's going through a hard time, read that. Because yeah. I read it, I read it when I was in Australia and I was in Melbourne. I was going out all the time and I was like the happiest person on the full fucking planet. And I was like, I, just, I don't give a fuck about yeah, any yeah, of this yeah, book. Yeah. And I then, read that, I'm only after reading yeah. that there and it's, that is very good, yeah. Another one I, talking about changing jobs and stuff like that, if anyone is thinking about doing that is to read um feel the fear and do it anyway right okay that just like basically tells you put the fire up your arse yeah yeah him. exactly yeah told yeah. me um forget about passion go through mm-hmm. something else do you know what i mean it yeah. sort of tells you just fucking it's not worth staying in a job that you hate like do you know what i mean i'm quite lucky that i was always that way inclined from the moment i left school yeah my jobs were that bad that i was just like oh, i can't do this and I'm, yeah my brain malfunctions if i get to do like, at first start, I wouldn't be able to do plastering. I'm just not good at anything like that. Right. But I was doing, like, retail jobs and stuff like that and see just having people telling me what to do and it, more the monotony the of jobs. The only thing I, I would do. say about plastering over, would say, a job like retail or, like, working in, like, a fast food restaurant or something like that. money. Not, no, not, well, the money, yeah, but, like, not there's nothing wrong with them jobs, but to me, there's no job satisfaction with them. Like, at least with plastering, when I'm finished plastering a house, I can look at it and go, I fucking plaster that. Yeah. So, I mean, every, every, job. every time I drive by it, that house, like, I do a lot of work in my local area. Like, every time I drive by a house, I plaster, like, I look in and say, Is we plastered that house towards, yeah. what, are you going to, I give that fella a burger. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There's, there's no <laughs> job satisfaction with yeah. it. There's never, not never to look back at it and say, Jesus, I did that. Like, you know what I mean? That's the one thing that always pulled me away from them kind of jobs. Yeah. I think you are... Like you are at the point that you could go full time anyway. I think with like coaching, you're just you're doing it probably smart and what I done because I got sacked and then was like, well, I've no fucking choice. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you're trying to scale them, scaling the back, and like my boss is my brother. Yeah, and he is up to so busy, like it's ridiculous. Mm. Work at the minute, and I promised him I'd give him the year. Yeah, I'd work the year with him, so he took on enough work to do us the year. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'd say I could go full time at it now but I want to stick to my word and give him the year and go full time at right. the PT and then um, the, mate, the one thing after like so what I do with people before they come on is I just literally go through their foot mate I've seen pictures of you from 2017 and oh, stuff Jesus Christ. <laughs> but the one thing I really wanted to talk to you about because I've not really spoke about this with anyone is like red flags when you're dating like right, okay. I just want to go for like what do you think is the biggest red flag? And I generally think I know your answer and I think it'll be the same as mine. If you were to pick one thing that's a red flag in a, in a girl, what would it be? Oh, Jesus. Um, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm worried now what you think it is. Um, well, that, I'll tell you what mine says. Right. If you agree. Astrology. Oh, man. <laughs> How? that It's just absolutely r- is ridiculous to me. How people think... The day you're born. Before we get into this, are you into astrology at all, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Oh, it's ridiculous to me how people can think the day you're born makes you a dickhead or not. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can. So, like, there's just no dickheads born in January. Like, no, yeah. like, that's not the way it works. Like, do you know I've, what I mean? It makes no sense to me. I've seen, like, people, I've seen people on TikTok, like, going through like how all they're going through all of this stuff like maybe it's like their work or whatever or somebody's cheated on them or whatever yeah. and they're like the planets are aligning with yeah, Jupiter yeah. <laughs> and I'm like no oh, you've, you're in a bad mood yes. because you've been cheated on yeah. which is being, oh man it's, it's nothing to do with the planets I just are like horror they're like them horoscopes yeah people are eat, like, and they're so vague I swear I was seeing a girl for a while years ago and there was um horoscopes in the paper or magazine or something and yeah. i was like so you believe in them she said yeah and i said right i'm gonna read yours she was i can't remember what the fuck she was i don't even know what to call it say scorpio but i Scorpio. i read out one of them and she was yeah. like yeah that's me yeah that's me and i was like that's not your one <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what i mean i read out a different name i would say libra or whatever she was yeah. scorpio and i was reading out libra and she was like yeah that's me yeah that's me and i was like yeah that's not your one it's ridiculous they'll literally pinpoint anything yeah but it's like, like they're just so vague and like you can apply them to anyone do you know what i mean and you're so passionate about what you do yeah that's me no like that um like 
I was gonna say, like you go out with a girl and they'll like as soon as they go when you born and you say the month and then they go what day and you're like ah <laughs> fuck <laughs> another day of my life I wasted. Don't, yeah, I don't get it. I just it's just something that I will never understand. Like how people could possibly think that it's i just think if they're into astrology there's so much other shit to come yeah yeah exactly <laughs> that's only like the little like but i think sprinkle. it's just like a not a phase what would you call it a but, trend yes exactly yeah. like it's just a trend that people it just gives them something to fucking do like. i think i've got this rule if like my mom is really happy and shit and if my mom is into it it's a red flag yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah like yeah. my mom is into every single conspiracy theory ever She's into astrology. She's into all of this healing sort of stuff. Like my, about five years ago, right? I was maybe like 21. My mum bought me a Christmas present. My mum's notorious. Like I've told her, so she won't be offended, but she's really bad at presents. Like one time she got me a Barry Fer- a signed book by Barry Ferguson, who was the Rangers captain. Obviously I'm a big Celtic oh, fan. Oh, Jesus. And he used to get coffee out of my auntie's shop in Lark Hall and my auntie got it signed. And that was my Christmas present when I was like 10. I was like the biggest Celtic fan of all time. I didn't speak <laughs> to her. I didn't speak to her for like two days. Oh, my Christ. dad ha- had to come up and collect me. I was down in the park kicking a ball and crying. <laughs> ah, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I was absolutely fuming. And then one time when I was 21, she got like, so she, she sent me this massive box saying like the 10th of December. And I was like, oh, holy fuck, what the fuck is this? And then... Um, she kept on texting me. She was like, you got your present? I was like, yep, I've got it. And then we always go out on Christmas Eve here, or we did. So I used to always be hanging as fuck on Christmas. And she'd been texting me, honestly, for the full two weeks, going, I can't wait for you to open your present. <laughs> I was like, fuck, what is this going to be? And then on the day of Christmas, 8 a.m., I'm hungover. My mom's like, have you opened your present yet? I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, no. <laughs> right, and I'll go down. So I went down, picked up the box, heavy as fuck, by the way, like really, really heavy. Open the box. There's another box. Open this box. There's another box. My dad's looking at me going, like, what the fuck have your mother got you? I open up about six boxes, get to the bottom, and it's just a pink crystal rock. <laughs> like a humongous, like, have you seen them, like the big egg-sized things? Oh, is that like one of them salt yeah, lamps? Yeah, and it wasn't, even a, it wasn't even a lamp or anything. It was just a just big a rock. rock. Just a rock. And what was it supposed to do for you? <laughs> it's meant to heal you. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Did I help the hangover that oh, day? No? <laughs> my, my dad literally like fell off the couch laughing. Jeez. And he was like, my mom and dad broke up. So yeah. he was like, your mother has lost her fucking marbles. Mad. And then my dad put it up on the mantelpiece and he was going, oh, go, 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 go next day. That's crazy. <laughs> my parents are like, would be complete opposite to that. They're just yeah. complete old school Irish. So like, my dad is, my dad's old school, like yeah. Scottish. My, like, but this will tell you now how old school my parents are. My father... <laughs> Doesn't own a mobile phone. <laughs> right. Swear to God, he has no phone. But I think that's why you you say you're pretty bad with bad technology. Bad technology, yeah. There was, why? There, there was never Wi-Fi or internet in my house. Like. <laughs> yeah. Never. My, you can't get in contact with my father. Like. If you right. want him, you have to go to the house to talk to him. <laughs> I swear to God. You know, I got a house phone. No. Do you phone that? No. No. Nothing. My mother has a mobile phone, like. But if my mother's not at home, you can't contact my father. So is he, like, reluctant or he just can't do it? No, he's just, no, I don't he need refuses. one. He refuses? I just don't need one. What does he do for a job and stuff, or is he retired? He used to be a lorry driver. And, like, so if they wanted to contact him for a job or anything, like... Can't, like... <laughs> he turns up, doesn't turn up for a shift. And yeah, like, that's... I'd, oh, well. And I often... He, he does, you know, like, clay shooting? Yeah. He does that. Right, so he has to travel the country for that, like, you know what I mean? Right. I say, what would you do if you're in the middle of nowhere and your van broke down or something? Yeah. Same thing I would have done 50 years ago. Like, I'd walk to the first house and ask him, can I use your phone? And he said, what if they said no? I'd walk to the next house. <laughs> Fuck me. Do you know what I mean? Like he reckons there's no need for a man to have a mobile phone. He might be on something. To I be know, fair. but he is. I mean to say, the happiest man in Ireland. He is just so content with life. Like it's mad. I would love to do that. I would love to go away for like a month without my phone. Yeah, yeah. But I would have to. I'd have to. I would have to get someone to post for me or someone to do something you, for me. That's it. Yeah, like you wouldn't. The way we work, like you just couldn't not have yeah. one. Do you know what I mean? The things we like. I my whole online coaching business is ran for me if my screen like, time like it tells you every week if my screen time's under five hours i'm like fist pumping like, yeah i'm yeah. literally delighted i don't i don't think i've ever seen i don't know what mine is i don't even no check. your iphone usually tells you it does tell it? you 
But if you're plastering for nine hours, if you're not on your phone that much, yeah, it might not yeah, be that might, bad. Might be that high, yeah. Like I try, I really make an effort if I'm with people not to go on it. Yeah. Like I try my best, but but I'm on it all the time for work, and it fries my fucking head. Yeah, and I do I, like uh, make sure like. Like I say, I do like a lot of mindset stuff and like people, if anything I do, I've obviously heard it on Instagram or Reddit somewhere or whatever, but like I don't, no screen time, I'll say a half an hour before I get into bed and I don't check my phone until 10 o'clock the next morning. That's what right, okay. I try to do. So I don't look at my phone when I wake up first thing in the morning, I don't check it until that's my first break and work, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? That's my rule. Like I, I fell asleep with TikTok on. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I find like, I was doing the start of a six week challenge and I was really busy, we'll say, the week getting that set up. Mm. And that week, I was on the laptop until I got into bed, like, you know what I mean? So, mm. but when I got into bed, then I felt like my eyes were twitching from being looking you at the screen. You head. Yeah, I couldn't I sleep properly or nothing after mm. it. So I, I find it helps with my sleep as well, like, not I can't cu- I can't curb the addiction at all. Yeah. I really, like, I've tried so many times, and I've watched so many, I don't know if you know Chris Williamson that does the Modern Wisdom podcast, no. where he... He talks about it all the time and like he talks about how he made so many, he's like a big podcaster and he made so many podcasts about like phone addiction, bringing it down, making you happier and stuff. Oh yeah, like I'd be preaching about that as well, but I feel like such a hypocrite, like posting a video telling you not to watch videos. And he done, he done like an end of year review of his year and he went, yeah, I tried the whole, like he was like, I'm preaching about the phone and I can't. I can't stop it. Yeah, yeah, that's mad. Especially if you're posting on social media, it's part of your job. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how to stop it. it. Because if I, like, say when I was in Australia, I honestly posted on Instagram like three times because I just didn't give a fuck about, like, you know, the way people here would post when they're going out and stuff. I was just genuinely that enjoying it that I didn't Didn't feel the need to show people that I was enjoying it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that was like, my screen time was like an hour and a half. And I'd love to get back to that, but I can't. Yeah, that would surely say it would be impossible for us to do that. Like, do you know what I mean? When I was doing the 75 hard challenge, I mean, that I, was my next topic. Oh, was it? Yeah. yeah, I was so busy that like I couldn't, didn't have time to post anything. Like, it takes, mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but like to make one of them videos, I mean, it takes me about two quarters an hour or an hour before I like to cut it or to what would you say, edit it and all that crack. I was trying to, we had, me and Michael had this conversation I was telling you about, people don't realise how long it takes us to do that shit. Yeah, that's what I mean, I just didn't have fucking Half time. of the time is like thinking about what Because I was do. doing that challenge, I was still doing my PT course at the time, I was mm. finishing off that, and working eight to five every day, plastering, mm. and then had online clients <laughs> at the same time as well. I mean, it was horrible. What? Like, so I've not seen any, I've seen it on TikTok all the time. You just love the fucking TikTok-y shit, like 75 yeah, yeah. hard. Uh, That's where I get all the or People used to, like, I'd put up a video and people like, sure, you got that from such a place. Like, well, yeah, like, I yeah. didn't just... What is 75 hard? What are all the things you have to do? Did you do the... Because people adapt it, don't they? No, I did it proper. I, I did. did. You have to drink five litres of water every day. Five? Yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't be in the toilet. For the first two days. I wouldn't be in the first two days. For the first about two weeks, I'd say I pissed 60 times a day and I had to get work. Kept waking up in the middle of the night. What's the reason the, for the five litres? I have no idea. That's like, obviously to hydrate right? yourself, but like, I think it is a bit excessive. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I did stick to it in fairness. Mm. The first, that was the hardest thing for me for the first two yeah. weeks of trying to get in the water. You bloated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have to stick to your diet. No rest, no cheat days, no cheap meals. You have to do two 45 minute workouts every day. And one of them has to be outside. Um, and you have to read. What were you doing for the outside one? Just going for a run, walk, or else hurling training. Would you count steps as a workout? Or would it have to be like you're doing No, I'd some, sometimes like I had like an active recovery day every week. So like I'd go and do like a yoga class or something. And then I'd just mm. go for like a six or seven K walk. And then what's the other one that's inside? Gym. Gym. Yeah. So we train every single day. Yeah. That's what I mean. There was no rest days. That's I learned so much from it for the fact that for the first month, the my gains will say was outrageous. And then I just went the other way. My strength actually yeah. went down for the last for the last half of it. Yeah. I mean my strength went up crazy yeah. for like the first 30, 35 days. And then from day 35 to around day 50. That was the hardest part because I was just, just in agony all the time. I was in the middle of it. it wasn't uh, once I got past day fifty, it was like right, I only have twenty days left. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But when I was in the middle of it, it was horrible because because like, when you've got like forty five days left, that's a long time. That's a long time. It's right, yeah. But it was like my gains like had completely stopped. I was just bollocks tired all the time, <laughs> and I was trying to stick to my diet. I got so, I got was got so fucking lean, like it was ridiculous because yeah. I was just doing so much. 
so it was tough on the head what was your upset. reasoning for doing that because like being honest for like i would actually do that right but i would i wouldn't i wouldn't want to post about it because i was not what and it'd be the same for you you probably don't want your clients doing that doing that yeah i but just love you're that doing shit. it for yourself yeah so. i love the challenge right absolutely love it like and like i was so happy with myself when i finished it yeah do you know what i mean i just love shit like that but i i got a question someone said to me like you preach about um it's not having to take over your life kind of thing but your life is you just committed to 75 days yeah yeah pretty much torture yeah what's what's the story with that and i was like well this year i said i wanted to be the fittest was is reading one of them as well yeah you have to read 10 pages of book every day as well um like i was saying i wanted to be the fittest i've ever been Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so like you're like i was saying earlier on your actions have to do you know what i mean be in line with your goals you know what mm-hmm. i mean so in order for me to get fitter than i ever was i was going congruent to with your sorry i just want to get a big word out <laughs> <laughs> stuck, to, stuck in my head i have to um oh fuck i have to ruin my train of thought now <laughs> you were um, saying your your actions have to line up yeah exactly your, so like for, in preach. order for me to be the fittest i've ever been i want to have to train harder than i ever have do you yeah. know what i mean but that's everybody doesn't have to do that it wasn't do as i say not as i do kind of thing yeah you don't have to do that if that but my in order for me to hit my goals, I had to do something drastic. Like, you know what I mean? Did it, do you think that helped you mentally, like going forward? Definitely, yeah. Because I was just so busy at the time doing everything. I was like, if I can handle all that shit, like online coaching is going to be that. Makes you like unstoppable, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, because I can definitely get so much shit in your day. Like, I used to have to schedule everything. Every yeah. minute of my day was accounted for, like, when yeah. I was doing that challenge. That's, that's interesting you say that, right? Because, like, we can like i can complain about online coaching sometimes like i really don't like when when i do check-ins sometimes my head can be absolutely yeah. minced but when when michael done the last one we we had an airbnb and we went back and we watched you should watch this by it was fucking unreal it's a film called boiling point and it's all done in one take and it's about a restaurant mm-hmm. you might have seen it on as if you go on netflix it was like the top thing for right. a while um but it's all done in one take and it was when we were watching it because i done hospital for like three years and everything that happens in it is so triggering when you've worked in hospital you're like i fucking hated when people done that stuff like that and it's like go like it's like to do with allergies and then people being like posh people being really fucking cunty with right. like orders and stuff yeah and we watched that and we both looked at each other and i was like we cannot complain <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly like, that's what i'm saying like not to go back to what i was saying again but about hating the ashram like I always say, like it'll never be as bad as this. <laughs> Do you know, what I mean? just like <laughs> yeah, it'll never be as bad as this. I honestly think there's no worse job in the world than plaster. Than plaster. I swear to God, it's fucking hardship. There, there's no way there's any plaster in the world that likes their job. It's great money, all that crack. It's tax. I'd imagine it's really taxing. Taxing on the body as well. Like yeah, I'm like my shoulders are fucked like mm. already, and I'm only twenty nine. Like you know what yeah. I mean. I have my oldest brother used to be plaster. He had to give it up because it's that's what like when like. I tried tradey jobs in Australia for a bit, and like when I was doing it, I only thought I lasted me. I'd done like two. T- I'd done a twelve-hour shift with this Colombian guy setting up the Eminem concert, and the Colombian guy couldn't speak English, so it was a agency job. And I turned up, mate, and I don't have a fucking clue about anything. Like I couldn't put a cupboard together from IKEA. Like I would be stressed out. Yeah, yeah. And I get get there, and obviously he's foreign and i can speak english so he thought i was his boss and he was asking me everything oh, to do fuck. and i mean i've never done a trade job in my life <laughs> i just i had the boot so i looked a wee yeah, bit at the yeah, part, and I, I, yeah. I had like a tradey tan because i was out all the time he yeah, was like yeah. asking me what to do and he, he was like he was like googling things and then translating it to english and he was like what That's do you want me to do next boss and i was like i don't fucking know because <laughs> it was one of i was one of those agency that- jobs we got there and they were like it was literally just can you put the f- concert floor down like so you know the way if you go in a, a football pitch and it's got like the padding oh, above the grass the, the we grass. were just laying that laying down, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so i kind of grasped that but like if you if we finished a little bit you you just cut about for like two hours i've done jobs like that before but yeah. he was like what do i do next i was like i don't fucking know how would it like how would you be sent to do a job like that when you have no qualifications you had to get uh i had to listen to some woman who was definitely on cocaine talk mm. about wearing a safety hat for six hours i had to get one of these oh, qualifications yeah, we do. yeah. Home mate well. she was literally job. just like she made us all stand up and put the hat on are you serious we do the orchids manual handling 
there's like a box on the ground and you have to pick it up properly and put it on the table take yeah. it off the table and put it back down on the ground because we had to do in Australia we had to do one for alcohol as well which is the same same shit you have to do it in Scotland but it's free but you have to pay in Australia it's work in a bar is it yeah, just about fucking, like, they tell you this story about how some guy hit somebody one time and he died. It's called Kingpinning. And they, they tell you stuff like that. And it's just about, you, in, in Scotland, you're not allowed, Scotland aren't allowed to do deals with alcohol. You're not allowed to do, like, treat for a tenner. Yeah, or you can't like do that. anything like that in Scotland. You can't, you can't, like, you have to, you can't change your prices. So, like, if St. Paddy's Day is on, I remember that's the, the thing they used. Like, they couldn't change their prices just or for Paddy's Day. They would have to do it, like, the week before. I can't remember the rule. Right. Like, the week before, they would have to have all the same prices because right. you're not allowed to change it for 24 hours. That's mad. Yeah. In Scotland, like, you'd be big drinkers, to be fair. Yeah, fairness. They're, they're trying to cut it down, but it doesn't work. Right, yeah. These are all their little tactics. Like, you can't buy alcohol in the shop after 10, but sure, everyone's just there at 10 to 10. Yeah, wait, wait, that's that's been like that in Ireland for years. Is it? Yeah, the off license is, like, closed at 10 o'clock. Yeah, it's like that here. Yeah. We get a few, but they don't have those rules in England. You can't yeah. drink in the street here in Glasgow and stuff either. You get caught. Got fined a few times for that when I was younger. Are you serious? Mm. I don't. Think, I don't know what the rule. To be honest, I don't think I've ever drank on the street, so I can't. I don't know. It's what the even rule just is if you're in a taxi and you. Ca- this is how I got caught. You'd have a can in the taxi. Get out to go where you're going. As soon as you get out the taxi, you got a can in your hand. Oh, or forty yeah. quid. You get caught. You used to get caught for it all the time. Fuck. Really fucking bad. Yeah, that's hard. Shit. I don't know what the rules on that are in Ireland. I think yeah, like I've often seen like oh, Alex drinking on the street, so I don't know what. Uh, yeah, I think they've pro- they're probably quite like lenient, lenient with the alcoholics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just going, he's got enough in his fucking plate. I know, well, yeah. Yeah. And um, how did you find it, like in general, then the 75 hard? Would you do it again? No. No? No, I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> it's, it's a thing where I like, I've done now. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And I did it. There's a different one, Project 50, stuff like that. I was thinking, like, I'll probably do something like that at the start of every year. Mm. just to do it like i love shit like that like just to challenge myself and see how i get on with it kind of yeah. thing um but no i definitely wouldn't do 75 hard again it was a lot when did you finish it yeah day before paddy's day was it yeah did you line up like that i started on the first and that's just the way i fell ah, okay it was ideal yeah, absolutely i went about getting drunk and um, paddy's day went um and it just didn't work out some i was drinking with someone they ended up getting absolutely fucked Really? Yeah. Fucking hell. So, yeah. But it was good, though. I, like, I went away for a couple of nights and that. To, mm. At the end of it, like, and went out. Because I wasn't allowed to eat fast food for 75 days. Either, I know which what, is, like, which we don't have this place, but I see you talking. Supermax. Yeah. Oh, man. It's, I've had one before. I, have you? Because I, I, um, I've been to Galway a few times. Oh, yeah. And you know that one in the square? Yes, I've yes. I've been yes, in there a few times. It is unreal. Yeah. That's the biggest thing I missed the whole time of it was that and Kinder Buenos. What's the difference between Supermax and McDonald's? Soup Max is nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big McDonald's fan, but you know what makes it is like you can get dress dressing on your chips, or like you can get like garlic cheese chips, yeah. curry cheese chips, taco chips, all that. So if anyone's going to Ireland, that's one Go thing you'd Supermax. recommend. <laughs> Absolutely, the one in Houston Station in Dublin, right. the train station, yeah, yeah. is gorgeous. It's I, that's why amazing. is that any better? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I always go there in Dublin. Like you, you can taste the difference in the different ones. Well, I can anyway. Like the one in Port Leash, we'll say where I'm from and the town I'm from is gorgeous. Mm. But then there's there's one in like a petrol station, we'll say on the motorway. Do you know them? Yeah, big petrol stations. Yeah. There's one there, and it's not as nice. Right. Well, do you know what I want to touch on? Because I want to go back to it because I thought it was interesting what the way you were saying about how when you've done seventy five hard, you feel like you're like bulletproof after that. Yeah, yeah. Because I felt like that. I done. And this is why I don't like posting about stuff that I wouldn't want my clients to do because I've done a running thing in lockdown. Yes. So do you know, and I would, so I'd never really post about this, but I fucking hated working out from home. Like I absolutely hated it. Like lifting weights in the room. I've got, so I, like one of my programs that I do is adjustable dumbbells. I think it's a good way to start, but for me, lifting them in the living room, I fucking despise yeah, doing it. Yeah, there's loads of people say that, you know, about John you know, say finding a workout that like you like doing. Yeah. And everybody absolutely hates on like hit workout I yeah hear, like I've I seen, do. yeah you do as well <laughs> yeah. yeah but me i would do a 45 minute hit workout before going for a 10k run any day so this is and i would prefer a hit workout like I so would, i done the opposite i hated the lifting weights and yeah. i couldn't do the hit workouts so i done a running plan and i'd notoriously hated running and i don't i think the most i'd ever run was like 6k and i probably done a shit time and one of my mates was absolutely smashing these five he was getting like sub 18 minutes and stuff yeah. he can do like 16 odd minutes now and uh 
I just asked him how he was doing it, and he sent me he can buy this plan for like six quid to get you like I done a sub twenty one within seven weeks. I managed to get my time from twenty four minutes to like nineteen thirty, yeah. and see those six weeks or seven weeks of running. I fucking was the I fucking loved every so, minute of my life, and I was working in the call center, and like I would have. Aussie cunts being cheeky to me. I was like, I don't give a fuck, man. I'm just so happy. <laughs> I went to the, because it was a complete opposite to me. When lockdown started, I play hurling, like you were saying, mm. GA, like, and our team wasn't allowed to meet up to train because of COVID. Mm. So they used to, like, give us runs to do and, like, they give us, you have to go run a 5K and send your time into the group chat. I think even just the and football I teams were doing that. I hated it. Yeah. The running on the road, like, I, the, t- the conversations I had with myself when I was running. I was like, you just, all you have to do is just get to that corner and then turn around and go back and then you're finished. And I, I, I hate it. Like I would, I, I myself would take like the adjustable dumbbells at home and do a, a hit session with them every day over going for a run. Yeah, that's the is. way I am like. That, that's a good conversation to have though, because so when I slag hit workouts, I know there's people that like hit workouts. I'm not trying to get them. Yeah, I know yeah. there's loads of people that hate hit workouts that don't realize that a lot of the things that they want to achieve can be achieved from lifting weights. Yeah. And it probably will be more likely to come from weights. So I'm trying to hit them. Yeah. But the only way to hit them is by brutally slaughtering yes, yes. hit workouts. Well, sure, it's like when you're making a video, you need to say something so that people listen to if you. If you say something boring the if first five yeah, seconds, yeah, you're fucked. nobody gives no a fuck. No one gives it, no one cares. So I have to go, your hit workouts are fucking yeah, shit. Call someone a cunt in the first two yeah, seconds. Exactly. <laughs> That's one of my things. Yeah, yeah. Just let you get, get the word cunt in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, but that is true you have to catch them with something in the first five seconds of the video yeah otherwise the world's the so world's i get i get so much shit when i post those videos but to be honest when i know a video is doing well if i get slaughtered from it so if i get loads of people like i mean i get some some person was telling me shove your adjustable dumbbells up your arse and all of this shit like get absolutely slaughtered when i post those videos but i get through to so many people yeah. that need to hear it and other ones that are offended them like i don't give a fuck about you anyway yeah it's not even offending people but i get asked about fucking creatine constantly <laughs> you're saying that, oh my god and i like posted a couple of videos about creatine and then like you get people coming on saying like oh it makes you lose your hair and this one lad said i got moobs from like man from boobs creatine. From creatine i was like no you didn't that's probably the sarms <laughs> yeah i was like what are you talking about like no yeah. you didn't and I, or he was like how do you explain me getting man boobs from taking creatine then and they was like you didn't get it yeah taking creatine do you know what i mean it's impossible and he was like well someone what was he what did he say um someone with any expertise in the subject would have said it was from water retention i was like you didn't hold water in your tits from taking creatine like do you know what i mean that's ridiculous <laughs> like and another one i seen from up a video people seem to think creatine is something mental yeah it's not like, like it's, it's like, in meat like naturally yeah, do you yeah. know what i mean it's just a taking so just a little taking, bit extra yeah. of it like but it's so what was it someone said i seen a video the other day um taking creatine and not drinking enough water can lead to uh, kidney stones and cramps and i was like but just not drinking enough water without taking any creatine can lead to that like yeah <laughs> you know what i mean the creatine has nothing to do with it so like. this is why i don't really like quoting studies and stuff too much because you could they, there's a study to prove every point yes exactly if I, yeah yeah like i i say i explained it to someone if you were um making a study and you wanted to prove that ireland was the fittest country in the world park outside the gym and interview everyone going in ask them if they train yeah then 95 percent of people in ireland go to the gym apparently yeah but you you asked 100 people walking in through the door of a fucking gym and so so many it's, people like you can what would you say play with the results or like make them look like whatever you want like and you always study. find there's a there's a reasoning behind the study like there's it's done by a pharmaceutical company exactly. they're they, trying to push something they're trying to push something or sell something and they'll make the study in a way that's gonna the results will benefit them like, yeah do you know what i mean like there's the, re- the moment I get put off studies was there's a book what is by Johan Harry. What's it called? It's, it goes into basically like SSRIs and the medication for that. And just a lot of the, like, I don't agree with loads of stuff that he was saying and I don't know enough about it, but just all the studies that were done by the pharmaceutical companies and like they're the one funding the, the medication that they're yes. selling. When I just put all of that together, even if the studies are legit, like they can just tamper with anything anything exactly like 
the only way and there's so much money in that, that medication so much in my in my opinion the only way to know for sure if something if like a process or something works or doesn't work is to try it yourself yeah Same, like trial and error is the only way like you know like certain diets certain ways of training and all that crack just because it worked for someone else does not mean it's going to work for you yeah so like you have to try it yourself like and see like i've been training with like i said for the last 10 years mm -hmm. i'd say i've tried every diet and every way of training in that time so i know what works for me do you know what yeah. I mean? and it's not a slow process but that's just trying to get that message across that you're only trying to get to the people that will benefit from what and then all the other people but this, you attract so many people that are like i had done this and that worked yeah, for me yeah. and you're just like i don't like, give a fuck i'm trying to get to the <laughs> exactly. people just that will benefit for you doesn't mean it's gonna work for everyone yeah. else because like. i'm trying like all of my content especially at the start was geared towards people that have the all or nothing mindset yes. because that's what i struggled with yeah so everything i'm saying is geared towards them then you get people that went to the gym for 10 years and like no they should be training five times a week I'm like, shut the fuck up yeah, yeah i'm just trying to get people like, through to, those doors exactly and to try get go from not working out at all to go go to five times a week is so like daunting for people it's mm -hmm. like one where the fuck are we going to get the time to do that because even though they're not doing anything else to them like five hours a week is a lot of time to give. And it's not five hours either. So you hear people talking shit saying four hours a week is all it is. No, it's not. If you want to go to the gym, you're going to be an hour working out. You're going to be, if you live anywhere far away from the gym, you're going to be you 10 or more. 15 minutes getting there, getting home, yeah. warming up. It's two hours or more to go mm -hmm. to the gym in the evenings. Like, do you know what I mean? Not one fucking hour. It's actually hours. really hard. To, that's why like all of my clients will train three times a week. And then some, sometimes they want to do four, but I'm like, if you do all three, four weeks in a row, I'll put you up to four. But yeah. if someone in the second week is like, let's do four, and they weren't doing anything before, I'm like, no, 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 you do three. And then mate, I, I think only one of them's ever like went, right, fine, I'll go up to four. A lot of them have done all the free workouts, but they've then went, nah, yeah, fuck, fuck enough. the four. Because yeah, yeah, exactly. if you work nine to five, then you try to go to the gym and you're trying to like some people meal prep and stuff. Yeah. They're like, mate, I don't have the fucking time. time. Exactly, yeah. Like, it's already for me, like I say, I just adore training, like, I love it. But, yeah. like, everybody, not everybody does. So, like, some people, it's a, they have to talk themselves into going to the gym. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot easier to talk yourself into going three times than it is five times. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's why it is good to do, the, like, the 75 hard, as a coach, right? The 75 hard, me doing the running. So you can sort of push, put yourself in a client's shoes, shoes again. Exactly. Like, I wouldn't ask anybody. Because it's not to hard do... for us to go to the gym. Exactly. I wouldn't ask anybody to do something that I wouldn't do myself. Mm. You know what I mean? That's why when I talk about doing the, the serious cutting, I can't do it. Like, mm. So I try to say to my client when they're starting off, it's not fucking worth it. Don't try. Yeah. Don't do it. Like, just get yourself into a decent bit of shape and then just get stronger and try maintain it. Like, Yeah, because it sounds cringy, but one of the first things I say to people when they come on it's like i literally don't give a fuck about what you're like in 12 weeks i'm trying to like make sure the next year's better for you the yeah, next two exactly, years better yeah, for yeah. you next five years or even like i the way i do my check-ins i was telling you earlier on is just like a 15 minute conversation you know every week mm -hmm. it'll be a video call or a voice call or whatever and like they can ask me any question they want if they want to do like I, you cover a certain topic in your videos or whatever mm -hmm. if they ask me about a certain topic i will just talk about for 15 minutes with them and they yeah. learn for the 12 weeks and then when they have 12 weeks is over, they can stay with me. But when they leave me, they'll have learned enough that like, they can yeah. keep it going. For You want a client to, after six months, be like, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, long. yeah, yeah. Like, if you're with me for six months, nine months, you shouldn't need a PT again. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You should know what you're at, like, do you know what yeah. I mean? And know enough to keep it going. It, the only reason you won't keep it going is motivation or, like, you can't be arsed anymore. Not not because you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, and you can jump on again for like three months just exactly. for a bit of accountability and start again. I've had clients do that as well. Do you know, when I've, let's say, as I said, teach them for the 12 weeks or whatever, and then they go try to do it on their own. They have the information yeah. and they know how to do it, but they just need the accountability every week. Like one girl came back to me after six weeks, just like, I just need to have the check-ins or I just won't, I won't be able to. I think check-ins are huge because I, I had a coach last year and the way I was saying about, I was still locked down. I'm working out from home. I needed a coach to make me work yeah. out from home. I've never had, I never took on a coach myself. Like I think it's quite good me. if you're, if you're a coach and you want, like for you, if you're wanting to build your business, see if you had someone that's like went from what you were doing yes. and is in a place you want to be. Like, I think it's a good idea to get a coach right. just so, you, just so you can get them to help you with like, yeah, yeah. my last coach was more helping me with business. Yeah. That's, I don't, cause I, I was telling you like I'm terrible with technology and stuff and I need to like, 
learn new ways of doing my online coaching because mm. it's so time consuming the way I do it at the minute. Yeah. I think like, but I don't want to do it automated either that like, you know, I'd send in the same fucking shit to every client. Yeah, I don't do that either. Do you not? No. Because no. a lot of PTs do, they just send out like a generic fucking thing they all look like. No, nah, I mean, just, I, I openly admit this, like I give everyone, like a, a spe- well, there's maybe like three variations of the same program right. that I give people to start, but a lot of people that come to me are very, like complete beginners. Yes. So when I give them this program, I get them to send me videos of their form and then I do form videos and then like I'll progress and regress exercises. Right. So I, I actually think this whole idea of like customizing plans online is fucking stupid because you don't know what they can do. Yes. So like if you give them this customized plan, but they can't, they don't have the ability to like do half of it. It's like, what's the yeah, fucking what's point? The so I do, so it takes as much time, but I send them the program, get to see what they can do, yeah. then progress or regress it. The biggest thing is like more check-ins and stuff. You need to get, like smarter with them i think yes um because they're the most time consuming thing yeah. i would say check-ins because i've had when i first started i could spend two days doing check-ins Seriously. i know i'd only have like 20 and it would wreck my head like absolutely wreck yeah. my head so it takes me would say half a day to do all my check-ins do you know what i mean yeah but, like I say, it's just a conversation with them more so than it's like a more personal kind of way of doing it i think rather than just a video of you talking at them like you know what I mean? yeah how did you learn how to dance like that I don't know. I taught myself when I was a child. Really? I used to love dancing. Like day, shuffling? Because shuffling wouldn't have been a thing then, would it have? I would have, yeah. Yeah? I don't know all of that kind of crack, yeah. I used to, like, compete. What? Yeah, yeah, when I was really young, when I was, like, 15, 16. Actually, what kind of dancing? Actually, I won a, a All-Ireland hip-hop dancing competition. <laughs> Fuck off. I swear to God, yeah, in the solos, like, on my own, it was, like, a solo competition, yeah, I won it. It was in Galway. No way. I <laughs> you go to Supermax after? Yeah. <laughs> That was my treat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, Fucking yeah. It. So how would you do that? Irish hip hop master. <laughs> I swear to fuck. I won it. It was Fucking a trophy. Hell. It's like that. Was this outside? Because I'm imagining it like in the square. No, it was in like a basketball hall. No way. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty cool. So would you actually practice that then? Like, uh, Yeah, I used to. I was in like a crew, man. No way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was the only... Do that again, a crew, man. I was in the... <laughs> I, was in the I was the only fella in it. It was right. like me and 16 girls. No way. Yeah, yeah. And they would you learn loads off of them then? They no. would all be teaching you, no? No, not really. It was like, we had like a teacher. Right. Do you know what I mean? A dance teacher. But I used to do it on my own. And like the only way to get into the competitions was you have to had to be in a crew kind of thing. Had to be in like a team. What was your crew called? Royalty. <laughs> I'm loving this. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Ah oh, man, yeah, it was good old crack though. Because you were on about m- maybe making content in the gym, mate. I just want to learn any sort of like. It, mate, I'm the most like robotic fucking cunt ever. Yeah. I, but I gave I it up for years. But then like I only actually, but like that's why like the TikTok dances and stuff like that just come easy to me. Yeah. Oh, so you if you do a TikTok dance to a trend, you're making that up yourself. Which the dance? Yeah. No. Are they're, you copying a dance? Yeah, they're like on TikTok. They have the dances are like are the trend if you know what i mean it's ah. like you have to do a certain dance to a certain song so you can pick that up really fast yeah yeah exactly yeah like people See, are like, oh you're posting tiktoks all the time like it must take like for me to do one of the dance it literally takes me about three minutes Fucking you want know, to learn it and do it like i've done like, do one. it like i used to do remember on my break and work yeah. but they're like do you ever do any work i'm like it literally took me two minutes to do that like yeah hey, i done one because michael asked me to do it just for a laugh and it yeah. was like have you seen oh, I've seen the yeah. video of you. Do you know what that took me that? about four hours? You see? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was nowhere near it. Like, nowhere near it. And me and my, my flatmate at the time was playing Xbox whilst I was in my room and you could hear the, like, banging of me, like, <laughs> fucking nearly yeah, falling over. And all. That's mad. Four, four hours. And, like, I wa- like see, at one point, because I wasn't really watching our, because I was a girl I was copying, I wasn't really watching her. I was, like, just trying to do it. And then I'd watch myself back and I'd be like, Nowhere fucking near. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> I remember seeing that video. I laughed. Yeah, that was fucking funny. I was yeah. like sweating and all that. Yeah, yeah. Like, that was a proper workout. Because I did them. a thing for charity. Was it two years ago? Or, no, last year or the year before, where it was like for November, and I can't really grow a beard. So what I did was I did a trend or a dance every day for thirty days, and right. the thing at the end of it was if I got, I think it was five grand I raised, like. Right. And it was, I said, if I hit five grand, the deal was I had to do the dance from Magic Mike. Right. Did you know that film, the stripper yeah, yeah, film? Yeah. I had to do the dance off that at the end. Right. For, on the last day. And I did it like, and people were like, how the fuck do you know how to do that? And they would like literally 
So you hadn't learned it before, you just picked it up just there. Just picked and it up there, like, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. That was the deal of it, like, but that was, I actually knocked some crack out of that. Like, I get, like, obviously you get abused on TikTok. Mm. Some people, like, but for me, 29 year old man doing a 13 year old girl's dance, I definitely get <laughs> abused on TikTok. <laughs> and I'm usually doing it in my working clothes, like, my plaster yeah. here. Do you know what I mean? So people. Is your brother there me. half the time, or are yeah, you working? Yeah, he'd be laughing at me as well, like, do you know what I mean? Can but, he dance now? He's actually, like, he never competed, but he's well out of the move, yeah. <laughs> In fairness to him, he would be, yeah. What, he, would be, what would be, like, a beginner thing that you could teach me? Beginner thing? Um, like, know. I'm talking about, like, you know, that we were talking about clients, so I'm, I'm, like, the beginner, the beginner. client. Um, sure, we'll try a dance when we're finished this year, and we'll see how you get on with it. We'll pick, oh, you're getting involved. We'll pick a, we a trend dance. and try it. <laughs> 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 We'll pick, we'll pick what I mean. I've saved loads. Yeah, Mate, I was, I went for a phase of like, I was going to go like dancing classes because I was that paranoid Are you about, serious? Like, about how badly I can move. That's mad. I, um, like I used to save videos for a while that were like very beginner tips on like shuffling and stuff. And I was like genuinely going to try it in my room just when I was bored. Yeah, because like, that's how it, the, the TikTok started. I remember one of my friend's girlfriend. I've, my first videos were about fitness on TikTok mm -hmm. and then she was like would you not do the dances like you'd be class at them yeah do you know what I mean and then I did one remember you were saying on the stilts one the on the stilts, stilts one I think the stilts ones was maybe the ones I seen and yeah. I was like fuck me that's impressive and then it just blew up then yeah. from that I got like I remember the first one I did got like 500,000 views or something on the stilts yeah have I'm you got a few right, videos on the stilts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, well, I'll be bringing them at work <laughs> don't even need them you're just yeah, going yeah. fly you're like oh we're on the stilts today <laughs> <laughs> How is that way harder on the stilts? The dance? Yeah. Well, yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> dancing on the stilts or dancing in a pair of runners? Like, yeah, of course. It's, it's harder on the stilts, man. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll start me there. We'll start me on the stilts. Yeah, yeah. No, but like, it's it's crazy, like, what people actually want to see. Do you know what I mean? How, like. Well, that's why I love TikTok. Yeah, you could see that, and, like, couldn't you? It's crazy, like. There's a guy on TikTok that does. Do you know what I seen last night? Actually, maybe think of you, which I wonder paints herself green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love her. She's one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, I remember you talking yeah, about her. She's so good. I, I share her on Instagram all the time because she's class. Yeah, the chin. Yeah. She does the chin. The chin. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah. Good. I seen her last night. Yeah, she's car, amazing. Yeah. She's got one. She she paints herself blue now as well. Oh, does she? She's yeah. a good too. She's, oh, she's like her she's alter ego. Yeah, yeah. She's got her alter. I think she calls the blue one Denise or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. But there's a guy, mate, that grabs a cat, lifts it up. It's his cat. And it scratches the fuck out his face. And then he sings opera and the cat stops scratching him. It's, if I showed you this, it's bizarre because it's honestly like, it's got like its paw in his mouth, grabbing it down. He's like, ah, and then he just starts singing opera and it just starts to like this. Yeah. That's mad. Like I can be sitting on a, on TikTok like for hours just mesmerized. That's the thing with me. Do you know what I mean? Like, I very rarely like actually scroll on TikTok to watch videos. Right. I know I post on it a good bit, but like I was like that at the start. I never actually really watched them. And then I so what I done? I muted everyone on Instagram, like everyone. I was I went through a phase of doing that. I was well. so sick of like watching stories and stuff. Yeah. So and you can't stop yourself when you go on it. So yeah. I muted everyone on Instagram, and then what I found was I just started. I never watched TikTok before, and then I just like because my phone. My finger wasn't clicking on Instagram. I clicked on TikTok. TikTok and Next thing, and I, I'm watching people singing opera with their cat attacking them, <laughs> or a woman with a gr the green with face. With the green face, yeah. But it is crazy, like the shite people post on it. Like, you know what I mean? And what gets interaction from like viewers? Yeah, because I think a lot of people get caught up in just trying to get views, and it's like yeah. you're not doing it. Like they think, oh, I've got loads of followers. And I'm like, yeah, but like, what are you can do it. Cause that's what a lot of people come and be like, "How am I going to grow my Instagram?" Like, yeah, like, what do you want? What do you want from it? That's what I mean. Like, you could have fucking fifty thousand followers, but like, if none of them want to buy whatever you're selling, have what you got nothing to, to sell? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what use are the two of you? Like, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I'd rather have and say, I don't know what I have on Instagram at the minute, but like, it's no good to me if I can't turn some of them into clients. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? What use is having a pile of followers to you? If I, that's why, like I was saying, you're better off trying to engage with the followers you have rather than yeah. gain more followers so i think mean? a lot of people don't see that i think it was that so you know Darren cartel that's friends with james smith yes that, so he's he had a massive following i think it was like a hundred odd thousand um and 
we went to IFS. I think he said this on, I think he said it before on social media, but he tried to launch a product when he had like a hundred odd thousand followers and his Instagram was banging and he said it flopped like fuck. But I don't think he disclosed that it flopped when it first came out because obviously he was still, you can't be like, oh, it's flopped two days in, you're still yeah. trying to sell the product or whatever. And he, he said he learned so much from that about like, it really doesn't fucking matter about your fall and if yeah, your yeah. business is fucking not what it not should be. Good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I think people just grow the following and think, like, money just comes, comes from having the following. That's not the case, like, no, no. At all. Because, like, like, you can have 100,000 followers and half of them could follow you because they just get a laugh out of you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Half like, of them just want to see you on the stilts. Exactly, <laughs> that's the truth. But then it's like, like, them followers I have on TikTok that just enjoy watching me act bollocks. Like, yeah. they, they're no, not that they're no good to me, but they have no interest in getting a program off me yeah you know what none I mean? at all none at you all you could maybe try your hardest to like get them to follow you for another year and eventually listen to you you might get one or two one or two that's it like so on tiktok like i do a lot of acting the bollocks but i'll every so often i'll post a video of my fitness content and try and say like go follow me on instagram if you have interest in that side of yeah. what i do do you know what i mean and then on Instagram, then I'll try to turn my Instagram followers into clients. Yeah, That's no, the, the people work. on TikTok are like, fuck up, mate. I want to know what's happening with my ex. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> How yeah. How do I get my ex back? How do I get my ex back? Yeah, that's exactly it, yeah. Yeah, do you, do you think you're away from that now? From the... F- the relationship the, the relationship stuff. advice. Um, I think so. Like, I'm trying to pull myself back from it Um, just for that reason, like that. Then people are like, how can I... S- they have no interest in my fitness stuff. So yeah. it's like, but still, I, I like that content too. Like, it's actually, you're not, you're not a bit of crack over it, kind of, you know what I mean? Talking to people and... I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoyed, enjoyed making it, like, in fairness. I actually did. But no, it's it's no, there's no, I can bring it no further, to, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So it's, I think I'm... And again, uh, you want to be Eamon Duffy, the relationship expert. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't want to Because you get, you get, like, relationship coaches and stuff. Yeah, but I've, I, I don't really... I think that'd be a horrible job. It would, wouldn't it? You'd just be be so, like, not depressing, but, like... You'd just be dealing with real insecurities and shit. Insecurities, exactly, yeah, yeah. I I don't think that would be the job that would suit me. I'm not... Not that I'm not understanding. I'm not compassionate enough for that job, like, you know what I mean? I'd be, like, more of, like, shut the fuck up, complain kind of person, you know what I mean? Same with PT. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's probably very similar. Right, I think we'll wrap up here. What me and you are going to do is we're going to get straight to that gym. You're going to get the stilts out. Oh, lovely. Yeah, <laughs> get, yeah, yeah. Get me on the stilts. That's the job. Learn a few dances. If anyone wants to find you, what's the best way to go about it? Because obviously, i seen you actually properly launched a proper online coaching like platform thing that you were, you were yeah. pushing as well. If you want to plug any of that. I'm just, it's Aim and Duff on Instagram and Aim and Duff on TikTok. It's like, they're two completely different things. If yeah. you want to see like, me act the cunt um go follow me very TikTok. enjoyable by the way yes and if, if you want to see the serious side of me my fitness content all that crack motivational stuff all that kind of gallery is on what you say gallery yeah all that kind of gallery yeah <laughs> never heard that noise. <laughs> class um is on instagram so cool. about both same handle and um, just aim and off perfect it. mate it's been an absolute pleasure yeah thank I you very much for coming on so catch you 100 percent